thank you so much for joining me today on my show called Inspired Blessings with G. Marie Prince. And I have two guests today, Beryl and Nick Skula. And I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Okay. And um, the way I actually know uh, Beryl and Nick is um, we used to go to church a long time ago, okay? But then, of course, you know, you, you change churches and things like that. Um, but their daughter, um, yeah, Crystal Marie, because it's just like Chelsea Marie, my daughter, but <laughs> Crystal Marie actually happened to go to the same school that my daughter uh, was going to, which was the Smithtown Christian School. And so I know through their story in the fact of what had happened, and um, they wrote a, actually a book called He Rejoices Over Me. Um, and in it, basically, is that, um, you know, sometimes... We, it's like a little, it's like a hard topic sometimes to be addressing when somebody loses a child. And, but hearing about a child passing before uh, the parents can make most of us speechless. And, um, but when I heard, you know, that you wrote a book on behalf of your daughter and knowing that the topic says he rejoices over me, I knew it was a different type of a book, okay? And I had a feeling that your loss is different from others without faith. So I thought the uh, other parents who had to deal with the loss of their child, you know, really may need to hear how your um, pain had really turned into peace and comfort. And so, you know, I just wanted to really be able to have that so other um, parents who lost their children could be able to hear how you, you know, your trial and how you might have been able to, uh, you know, be more joyful rather than to actually than uh, share your faith you know, with the, uh, to the viewers, so this way they would understand how the most devastating trial in your life had really given, you know, you the strength to deal with it. So if you could be able to share that. Yes, um, we were blessed to be third generation Christians. Um, my grandparents actually got saved in the Moody Bible Church in Chicago. When you're saying saved, what do you mean saved? So well, they, they, saved. They, they didn't know, they had no relationship with God. They didn't know, um, they, were, they were from a traditional religion, and they wanted to be, they would, they would become born again, which means when you're born again, it means God, you're born into God's family. And when you're born into God's family, you're dying to yourself, and a spiritual life begins in you. And this spiritual life continues through eternity. And sometimes we, we, the only way it passes through eternity, we have to pass through the gateway of death, and then we, we're in the presence of God. And a lot of times um, it says in the Bible that when we're absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And this is where our faith is based on, on the, the Word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ who made a provision for us. Yeah, and. Um I know, you know, if you could be able to actually share, uh, well, um, I would like the viewers to understand who she was when she was alive. Well, she, they, this word is remotely misunderstood. She, was an, she had an exceptional character and personality. She was a, a type of person that always had to be first, and she was very determined and driven. This, we believe, came from when she was born, she had a speech impediment. And the speech impediment, she couldn't communicate with her parents and her family till she overcame this. And it would make her so frustrated. Every time she tried to communicate, she couldn't speak. Well, when she did overcome this through speech therapy, it, it molded her character into she become very deliberate and determined. Uh, she, her words were very few, and her actions were very direct. She was very serious in what she did, and she was always, she, she had this competitive spirit that she always had to do the best she could and be number one in all she did. Yes, yes, I mean, I read some of, some of the things that she actually did, and, um, you know, remembering Crystal, and in the fact that being a petite, to me, she's shy, you know, you know and quiet. But when I actually read about her and her uh, tenacity and, and how you tried to run after that criminal, um, actually somebody who was stealing something from the car, basically, and then all of a sudden Crystal run out there along with, with her brother, and they really wanted to be able to use their karate experience. 
Yeah, so it, it, it's good to see that she really was courageous. Yes. She, yes, you know, she and was. she really believed in standing up for the truth. Mm hmm. Yes. She, yeah. um, she, she was very courageous and she got that spirit from God. And early in life, she wanted to excel in everything. She chose to live as a lion in this life, right? In a thousand years of the lamb, she chose to live life to the fullest. She loved life, people. She loved experiences. She always wanted to try new things. And she had a passion for friends. Very strange about her. If someone picked on her or bullied her, she would not defend herself. It drove me crazy. But if someone picked on one of her friends, she would fight. Oh, come on, Mr. Oh, here you go. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yes. to uh, Crystal to end her life so young. Okay, what happened was we received a call from the school nurse and she said that she had a headache and I w went to pick her up and right from the school went to the pediatrician I had an appointment and he said, well, he looked, he checked her out and then he said, Go take her home, let her rest and have some tie and all. And then at 7.30 that night, she woke up with such an excruciating headache mm. and I called the covering physician and he said, I don't like the sound of this. Please t take her to the nearest hospital and have her scanned. They scanned her and they came to, they took us to another room, a small room, and a doctor came in and he wanted to tell us something, but he couldn't, he started to cry. Mm. And he left, he said, I can't do this. And another doctor came in and he told us that they found two brain tumors about the size of an ice cream cone in her head wow. and they were melting. So the tentacles of the oh tumor were actually reaching down into her brain. Right. And, that they, and he also stated that they could not handle this case, her case case and um, that it, we had a choice of um, either Stony Brook like or Schneider like yeah, First just, of all, she wasn't even showing any symptoms prior, it's just that morning? No, just a headache. Wow. Yeah. She had an incredible it, immune system. Uh, I never seen anything like this. She would get a cold one day and a day later it was gone. I, we don't ever remember her being sick. Wow. And she ran, we wrote in a book, she was in some kind of marathon. She loved running, mm -hmm. and she ran almost 10 miles three weeks prior to this. It was wow. something they had a school an event. And so I'm just surprised that she didn't have prior symptoms, but yeah. No, that's what just... You know. Yeah, the, it, it just, it's like, the, one doctor described it to me as Tasami. He says it just comes upon you and it explodes. What type of cancer is it? It's, it's called glioblastoma multiform number four. It's always fatal. They, wow, wow. So that, we went to the hospital, and yeah, <laughs> and that, what happened when they got in there was a team of doctors to greet them at the hospital with the ambulance and uh at three o'clock in the morning yeah mm. and that sunday she was operated on we wanted a, my husband wanted a second opinion yeah and i know the doctor was saying that they could in that time if she didn't do it oh my goodness so but she came through she was uh left-handed right. and uh what happened was uh the doctor said well it's on her right side which affects your left side mm -hmm. but I, and he looked at me and he said Oh, she's left-handed. I said, exactly. Yes. But when she came out of the anesthesia, she was waving her left arm. Right. And right. they said it could affect her speech, change her personality. Mm -hmm. And she had none of those effects. Right. She, um, and then she was in a performance right. shortly yeah, thereafter. Right. I know. Actually, I know. the cover of this book, this picture was taken one week after her operation, stage four cancer, and she just completed a recital one week after. Yeah, I know. That, I'm amazed at that. What happened was is the operation didn't happen. We, we, a Friday night we took her, Saturday they were prepping. We started calling all our Christian friends, you know, every church. Point, no, you probably got a call like, too. Mm. And we're asking for a miracle because in the beginning, the, the prognosis didn't look good. And it yeah. looked like if she did survive, she could be a vegetable. Right. That's amazing. And um, an amazing prayer went out from the Smithtown Gospel Tabernacle yeah. as Pastor Gary Zalingo. He prayed that uh, he stopped the service, we were told, because mm -hmm. we weren't there, we were in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And he said, right now, one of our kids in our school is undergoing a serious brain operation. And she may not make it, so we're gonna take this time right. and believe that God's gonna do a miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, I, People have told me that the congregation was standing, most of them just fell to the knees and right. cried out to God. Right. And after that, it was like, 
It was a miracle. Then the hospital started filling up with yeah. all these yeah, well, people and family, and relatives. Mm. One one lady told me she showed up. She was the only, she was the first one to show up, and she said God gave her a vision to come to the hospital, and he kept on. He kept, kept Crystal's on face kept on appearing before her, yeah. and she just drove to the hospital, not knowing anything, right. and, and it, it was like God had sent her. She was like an angel yeah, in human form. Yeah, She's yeah. very nice. Yes. Very nice. Um, what was uh, Crystal's belief in God? Crystal believed in God. She even wrote a testimony uh, to one of her school papers. Oh, really? And uh, she t she talked about her faith and. W we um, we were from a, a former church that used to evangelize, and um, uh, one of our you know duties were if you were in the ministry you had to uh, evangelize the neighborhood door to door. And, and ask people about their spiritual condition if they know Christ if they want to be part of God's family and we talked about eternal life and what happened was is one day Crystal came home at their second grade in another Christian school. And she says, Dad, I got something to tell you. I said, what's that? She goes, I just accepted the Lord today. I go, what? And I was rejoicing, mm -hmm. but my pride, I have to admit, was kind of hurt because I said, wow, God, I, I wanted to lead my daughter to the Lord. Right, right, right. And I didn't understand why that happened until after she passed away. Mm -hmm. A neighbor, which really wasn't a Christian, was testing her faith and wanted to know Crystal. Did you accept Jesus because your mother and father are Christians and they wanted you? She goes, no. She goes, did they make you, you, you go to Christian school because mom and dad want, right. might make you? Right. She goes, no. And then Crystal told her, she says, you know something? When I accepted the Lord, my mother and father weren't even there. Mm -hmm. And after I heard that, then I realized that that's why God didn't have me lead it to the right. Lord. Right, exactly. Yeah, because sometimes, you know what, kids can get influenced and things like that. And I think for you to hear that she did accept Christ without you being there, it went to show that this was something her will yes not your influence it mm -hmm. was her will amen mm -hmm. amen by chance or by design snowflakes are ice crystals that are formed high in the clouds when water freezes they always have six sides or arms but every one of them is unique just like crystal marie school what do you think yeah was she afraid to die? Um, she, you want to? <laughs> um, no, actually, it, it was kind of funny because um, well, it's not funny, but uh, the first operation, we were, we were, I, I taught her never to be afraid, right. and I always wanted her to be courage, and I, I, you know, and what happened was is um, we were all around her, and they were getting ready to roll her in the operating room, and we had to stop at these doors, mm -hmm. and she knew something was wrong with the family, right. and. Uh, she was very close to her mom. Right. And she sensed in the spirit her mom was upset. Oh, sure. And sweetie, would you continue the and, rest? And just, I said to her, Crystal, you know this is very serious. And she goes, yes, mom. And, and I said, well, how are you feeling? And she said that, uh, mom, I'll just see Jesus sooner rather than later. Mm. So that gave us, I, there was kind of, <laughs> after right. they closed the doors, we were like, oh then my we all, goodness. I mean, I will admit, we broke down to see your sure. little daughter. Oh, definitely. But that was reassuring, too. Yes. I mean, it was not the thing to tell your parents before a brain operation. Mm. But we, we knew her faith was strong and her relationship with God was right. As her parents, how were you handling it at this point? Oh, God, just, you know, God gives us the grace. He really does. And that it was just the love, the support, the prayers from our sisters and brothers in the Lord. Mm. And, and it was on those times we, we, you lean on the Lord. Right, right. Well, God, and yeah. in your weakness. Uh, I um, took it a little bit harder. It was kind of unique when, you, when you're first married, you have all these different concepts, how your family's going to mm -hmm, be. Mm -hmm. And I thought when I had my son, the firstborn, that it was going to be a special bond. And then, and then when Crystal came, I figured, well, that'd be Mama's girl. But it didn't work out that way. She was a daddy's girl. Right, right. And uh, I was very close to her, and I took it very bad. Mm. I had to put a face on for my family. Sure. And for my, uh, and for everybody, all one, the friends. One night, I had a dream that I, mm -hmm. I, uh, I passed away, passed away, and I was thinking about. She was six months prior. She was a ballerina. Right. She was asked to play Claire in the Nutcracker. She was picked, selected, right. 
and never happened. And what happened was, is when I, when I died, I woke up in heaven to all this bright light, and all the, all I, I all I could see was just white, and uh, I, I, I didn't know anybody. People were excited, and I met. My, I, for some reason, I found my wife. So we said, let's find Crystal, and we were walking through this crowd. It was just people were just so excited. When we, when we seen her. We couldn't believe our eyes, and she was completely restored. Because yeah, this was after she died that you had this. Uh, after I died, I dreamed I died, and mm -hmm. I seen her, and her, her scars were healed. Her hair was completely restored, mm -hmm. and it was very strange because she she took us, she grabbed my wife. We were holding hands, mm -hmm. and she pulled my wife, and I was going along. So I figured, let me stop. Mm -hmm. I want to get a hug. Right. And I had no power in heaven. I couldn't even speak. Right. And she dragged us to this room. And as, after we left this one room, this room was very somber. And in this room, there was a guy beating a drum. And there was an altar. And it, I could see three blurry figures. Right. And I, I looked at her and I said, is that who I think it is? And she didn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. And I stopped and I'm, all I realized, she's, she's in a ballerina outfit. So I says, my God, I says, yeah. I was upset to mm -hmm. see that we dressed that way when no one was dressed that way. Mm -hmm. And then the song comes on. And we sang the song in our church choir, He Rejoices Over Me, taken from the Bible verse, That's Zephaniah 3.17. Right. Mm -hmm. And in this verse, the lyrics go, uh, uh, I hope I have it right. Uh, I was desperate, I sought relief, none could be found. So the Father sought me in my desperation. He lifted me up. Now he celebrates my salvation. When she, when the song came on, we seen her just run full speed to the altar. And I said, what is she doing? I'm saying to my spirit, and she was very, she was very aggressive that way. And she jumped in the air and goes into the spin, and the spin was so severe because Crystal always pushed it to the envelope. Mm -hmm. She landed perfectly, and I remember me and the audience let out a gas because we thought she was going to fall. Right. And then all the ballerinas danced. And after this happened, we were so excited, and everybody's thinking, I got my voice back, and I said, "That's my daughter. Right. That's my daughter." Right. And as as I, I ran to, I was almost able to reach out and touch her. I blinked my eyes and I woke up and I was back in my bed. But you know what? I'm sure that dream will always be clear in your mind Amen. when you're recalling on it. Yes. And what comfort that that gives you? Well, that's what it was. My husband, I could tell for a year, he was he was depressed. Mm -hmm. He was depressed. And I prayed to God. I said, God, he needs help. Mm. And that's when he had the dream. So it was answered. Well, prayer. the Bible says that Jesus said that I will send a comfort to you. Mm -hmm. And I believe that was God's way of taking me to the third heaven in my spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was able to witness. Right. And, and one of my favorite, um, uh, I, 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 God gave me this saying that um, a moment in heaven is worth a thousand years on earth right. in the presence of God. Right. Yeah. And uh, the fact that you would be able to, uh, to see Crystal, I mean, that's, that's always a memory. And to see the fact that she is whole. She yes. is. No skull. Right. No more Her pain. Hair. Yes. No more pain. Yeah. Um, were you angry with God at all? Never. Never. We have to realize who God is. He's a sovereign God. And no matter who you are or how young or old, there's a day we're going we're gonna to pass. And God, God loved her that he passed. And we have to remember, too, God's family is here on this earth. And he has to be missing his family. And as we all know, mm. one day he's going to tell his son Jesus, bring my family home. Right, right, right. And we talk about the table, the feast. Mm. Like every holiday is like an empty plate where she used to sit. Oh, yeah. But in heaven, there are empty plates. God right. is waiting for us, right. for us believers. Right, right. And we're, and we're grateful for the 13 years that we yeah. did have her. Oh, sure. Such a you blessing. know, I mean, that's the, the, the memories. Because it's really, it's memories that keeps these, the spirit alive of the person. Yeah. You yes. Know? So it's, it's that legacy of that. Um, do you, did you think at any point that God was going to heal her? Like, how many actually surgeries did she end up having? Like, you know, uh, t two, and um, the third time, the cancer got woven into the brain, and they they cannot separate the the tumor from the mesh, and we we were just we never gave up hope, right. and we 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 were fighting the angel of death, mm. and we were asking God to do a miracle. Right. We were waiting to walk her out of that hospital. Sure. 
And but what it was is in God's sovereign will, He had a different plan. Just like I didn't understand the first plan, I may not understand a second. But when I get to glory, mm. it's uh, you know what? Like I said, is the fact that to lose a child, but then to have your faith, you know, it's a different type of a feeling, and because you know where she is. Yes. So yes. that that's definitely comforting. Um, what was your Bible verse, would you say, that really gave you the peace going through this trial? Well, we both have different Bible verses. Okay, yes, sure. yes. <laughs> you want to go first, sweetheart? Oh, you can go. Okay, uh, mine was Psalms 27 1. Mm -hmm. For the Lord is my light, the Lord is my salvation, my strength is in Him. Right. And mine is the peace. And He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And that was uh, uh, Second so Corinthians 12.9. 12, 9. Yes. Um, during this time, were you able to take time off from work when she was going um, through her uh, illness? Well, I was one day in the hospital with Crystal, and there was a young girl mm -hmm. uh, in the next bed. And they came in, the social worker and the nurse, and said, which one of you are going to give up your job? Mm. And, that's what, and that's what it is, is basically you need one parent there. Right, to right. care for your child, to be there, to take her to appointments, pharmacy, and so forth. So We, we decided um, when we raised our kids that my wife's job would be raising, raising those kids, and we sacrificed a lot financially. Sure. But me at work, I was there in body. I just really wasn't functioning very mm -hmm. well. Right. And our little family business had suffered, you know, during that period. Right. So, what were the medical bills that, uh, I mean, because I know, was your health insurance company, it was a good comp uh, well, company? Well, it's, it's funny you mention that. Um, when we first brought into the hospital and we told them about the uh, operation that was needed, mm -hmm. they denied us. Wow. And how? then it, they, they just They just prefer to let her die, don't even bother. You know how the insurance companies are. And then they denied, uh, we had to get chemo, if we got them to okay the operation, and the doctor told me, he was a great doctor, Dr. Mittler. Yes. He said that, um, he says, don't worry about that. He says, my office is trained to deal with these people. Mm -hmm. And he says, the hosp the insurance companies only have like two types of patients, dead and well. I says, whoa. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's a harsh thing. He was thing. being honest. Yes. Yeah. Um, so... I mean, I mean, the fact that so the insurance company wasn't really... They, they, eventually, they eventually paid, but if you know a family out there that's going through um, something like this with a child with cancer or a family member, mm -hmm. even if the, they have insurance, it drains them financially. It's astronomical. I mean, all the costs, the traveling, the gas, the food, the special needs, the co-pays... All these different things are horrendous. I mean, yes, uh, we, we did receive, thank God, a lot of the a lot of the saints reached out and helped us. Right. But it was still difficult, and uh, it virtually like bankrupt us after this is all over, because every savings we had, we it would have been whatever cost we were willing to pay. We just were praying that God, if God would have kept us, it would have been worth it all. Would have kept a few pro crystal. But it didn't work out that way. But mm. we, we fought with everything we had, any resource we mm -hmm. had, any friend was helping, it, were helping us through this desperate time we were going through. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that friends in the past, you know, wanted to help you and things like that. How would they go about um, if there was, new, you know, people today that wanted to help you? What would they, you know, how would they go about um, being able to help you? Is there a website they would go yes, to? Yes, you, you could, um, you could mm -hmm. contact us at... He rejoices over me dot com by Nicholas Schooler, and you could read on that website um, ways that we can be of help. We can maybe minister to you. Well, this is our new ministry, or ways if uh, someone uh, wants to contribute to the foundation we are starting, and you know, we, you just reach out to us and call us. And uh, even if you can't make a contribution. We want to help you. If you're going through something, we, our job is to minister to people. And we want to share what God has done for us. And we've been through this war, and hopefully we can be of help. I mean, gr everybody grieves differently. And um, 
sometimes it's good to have someone to pray with you. There were times in our life we were so weak that we couldn't lift up our voice to God because we was just, our spirit was so depressed. But there were brothers and sisters that came to our left arm and right arm and lifted us up and upheld us in prayer. Thank you so much for oh, being on you. my show today. No, and thank you um, for I wanted us. to give you an inspiration. Oh, um, thank you. And, and, and it, it's again um, oh, because you. of what we were speaking about and things like that. Oh. And it's called Our Child Will Never Be Forgotten. GMarieprince.com and BlessToInspire.com. Oh, thank you so much. Our child laughed and played, enjoying God's beautiful world through the eyes of youth, with the wind blowing in and around their hair, giving hugs and kisses to us in their special way. Then our lives just froze at that moment, realizing it was a memory of the past, of how our lives used to be, before our child was taken up to heaven. We will always miss you, our beautiful child, and we will never forget the memories we made. We will put a smile on our faces in memory of you and reflect the love we have shared. Mm -hmm. We know you are with God our Father in heaven now, his loving arms holding you with his love, and that is how we find comfort in our hearts, knowing that he's watching over you uh, until we embrace another in he one another in heaven. So, oh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't that beautiful? And I want to thank you again for joining me on my show today. And again, my tagline is keep inspired blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others are at a loss for words. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. In memory of Crystal Marie Scula, a child of God. To accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible.